Hello fellow chemists. Today we're going to go over how to write mole ratios from balanced equations. Uh, the first thing is to start with is a definition of what a mole ratio is. It's the ratio between uh, the numbers of moles of any two substances in the balanced equation. Um, the one thing that you may want to go back to is defining what a mole is, is that it's 6.02 to the 23 particles. And those particles can be atoms, ions, molecules, or formula units. So that's just a quick review of what is the mole and what are particles. The coefficients that are in front of these balanced equations are going to be these things called the mole ratio. But before I even get into the mole ratio, what I want to do is just explain this reaction using molecules first. So the coefficient of 1 says, uh, says that there's one molecule of nitrogen. It's going to react with three molecules of hydrogen, and it's going to produce two molecules of ammonia. So before we do mole ratios, I want you to see this with a model kit, what that really means. What it means is I have this kind of cool triple bonded nitrogen, and it's going to react with these three hydrogen uh, molecules. They're both diatomic, meaning they have two of the same atoms bonded together. In the world of chemistry, you have to put energy in to break these bonds. So the first step is to take these reactants and break open all the bonds. Um, you put energy in to do this. And then I have to break all these single bonds of hydrogen. Hopefully none of them roll off the table here. And then I have to make my ammonia. Now what's going to happen, and maybe you can see, is I'm going to end up making two ammonia who are trigonal pyramidal. I have a video about Vesper uh, structures if you want to watch that one. So this makes two molecules of ammonia. There's the other one. And that's really what those coefficients can stand for. Now, the problem with it in chemistry is that trying to just react molecules is almost impossible in terms of a molecule of this and three molecules of that. We would react way more than that because then we can put it on a balance and weigh it. So really, we need to have a whole mole of nitrogen reacting with three moles of hydrogen to produce two moles of ammonia, and that is an amount we can put on an electronic balance and actually measure its mass. If we only measured a molecule, it wouldn't weigh enough for us to use with the balances we have. So here are the mole ratios that you can write from this. I can say that for every one mole of nitrogen, I'm going to need three moles of hydrogen to react with it. Or the opposite of that is to say that I need three moles of hydrogen to make one mole of nitrogen react with it. That's mole ratio number one. Mole ratio two is saying that for every one mole of nitrogen, I'm going to produce two moles of ammonia. And then the uh, reciprocal of that is saying that if I made two moles of ammonia, I would have used one mole of nitrogen. Last but not least, um, if I start with three moles of hydrogen, I'll make two moles of ammonia. Or if I make two moles of ammonia, I would have used three moles of hydrogen. So those are what are called mole ratios. So let's work through a practice problem and let you try to come up with the right answer before I kind of tell you. So here is our reaction that we're going to do together as a practice problem. Um, we're going to try to write all the possible mole ratios for this balanced equation. They're going to react four moles of aluminum with three moles of oxygen to make two moles of aluminum oxide. All right, so here we go. So let's try to do one uh, ratio first. So we'd say that for every four moles of aluminum, I'm going to need three moles of oxygen. So there's one of my mole ratios. Um, another one would be if I wanted to do kind of the um, opposite of that, what's called the reciprocal, you would say that for every three moles of oxygen, I would need four moles of aluminum. So those are technically two separate mole ratios, but really they're very similar to each other. Um, another one would be if I wanted to say four moles of aluminum would make two moles of aluminum oxide. And then again, the reciprocal of that would be saying if I had created two moles of that aluminum oxide, I would have maybe needed here four moles of aluminum to balance that whole equation out. And then last but not least, we'll compare oxygen to aluminum oxide and three moles of oxygen produced two moles of aluminum oxide. And last but not least, you have the reciprocal of that, which is that you have two moles of aluminum oxide 
um, for every three moles of oxygen. So those would be all the mole ratios possible, but really these two are very similar, these two are very similar, and these two, um, because they're just reciprocals of, of those same uh, values off of the balanced equation. So again, these are coefficients, but really they're moles, and the reason why we don't call them really molecules and ions and atoms is because we're trying to mass them on a balance, and we need a certain weight of them. I hope it helped, and again, the goal here was just to write mole ratios, not worrying about mass yet. That'll be a separate video. Um, and again, the definition um, of a mole is that it's still 6.02 to the 23 particles, and that's how many we really need of these types of particles to have a sizable mass to put on a balance in lab.